What is going on, people of YouTube? My name is Kurt Yo, and welcome not to episode 3, but a preview of the weekend games. I just thought I'd do a one-off video, as the others have done incredibly well compared to the other views and the type of videos I do on my channel. And I thought I'd try and do a preview, try and give you tips and tricks of how to get the best team out within your squad that um, you can do. Because in the other videos I've already used, you get one transfer a week and I already use up that transfer to get rid of the, the one rubbish player in your team points wise. So I thought I would try and do this to try and make sure you get the team right for the weekend because I lost a load of points in the last episode. I didn't have Koscielny, Lukaku or Coleman on I mean, that was a massive error and it's something that I've got to try and make amends for and it's what I am here to do today. Now immediately I don't think it's um, the same team as I left off with. I have changed it to the team that I would play if all the players are strong. Not simply because Ki Sung Young won't get as many points um, as any of them three. Neither will Valencia. Um, Naismith I had to take off for um, Lukaku because I had to have two strikers and the five defenders because they are every one of them is too amazing to leave out. Now, for you to pick the best team to play in the weekend to get the most points is always in the fixtures. It doesn't matter what their form is like or anything because, well, let's face it, let's say you've got, um, for example, QPR keeper. Let's say QPR get a load of clean sheets. Suddenly they play, go away to Man City. Although that keeper's in form and you've maybe got um, a less informed keep on your bench, you'll put the less informed keep on your on your actual team because less likely you can see goals as they're playing at, at home to a team like Burnley. I'm not no offence to Burnley, but less likely to score, less of a threat than the big Man City team that they've got. But with my team at the moment, there's one thing that stands out and that's Lukaku. Although he's seventy five percent chance of playing and he might go on a score a hat trick or something, you, it's not worth risking because if I leave him on, he could maybe start on the bench, come on 70th minute, not do anything. Naismith could go on and pick another 9 points up, and that's points lost for me. And if Lukaku does nothing, just come on the bench and get 1. That's not really what I want to happen. So, first of all, I'll go from top to bottom, keepers, defenders, midfielders, then strikers. Aston Villa away, Crystal Palace at home. I really wanted Palace to stay up. I, I hate Palace. I really wanted Palace to stay up. Warnock's in charge. They've now become the most hated team in the Premier League again for me. Thank goodness. And with Warnock in charge, they can now go down. And I can happily wave goodbye to them and Sheffield when they come back up. I'm sidetracking again. Crystal Palace at home. Crawl will not have to do much. Aston Villa away. I feel like um, Hull will be pretty good. It's a tough one because I know Palace... It, I think it would be surprising if Palace got any goals out of that game and um, I think it would be surprising if Villa went and overcharged Hull but I think Krull won't have to do anything against Palace and I think McGregor will have to do something against Villa and if he, do if he does make a few good saves and keeps a clean sheet it's a, it's a win for me. I would take the safe option I feel like McGregor is worth the risk. Now, as the keeper's done Again, looking at that, if you've got a Burnley keeper, mm, maybe not. Actually, if you're playing against Man United, maybe yes. If I get a few strikers in as well, but let's say, sorry, um, let's say Leicester keeper. No, it's not worth the risk. Maybe in form or something, but it's not worth the risk. But onto the defenders, it's a tricky one having three Chelsea and one Everton because. They're all playing against each other, and that game could easily get quite a few goals. But I know Ivanovic, Terry, and Cahill will all play as two will Coleman, so that's immediately eight points. But I want them to do something. And for now, I'm going to leave my defence as it is, unless we're away for Arsenal. They can see it's it's poor, and I think Koscielny has to play. If he doesn't play again, then I will question whether Arsene Wenger has a brain. But um. Leave the defence as it is for a moment as you look onto the midfield. Now that is 
But the field is tough. It is incredibly tough. Tottenham away for Henderson. That's um, one that's questionable. Sigurdsson, West Brom at home. Alan Irvin, literally. That's two teams I want to go down. West Brom, Palace. Third one, anyone I suppose. Burnley, Palace, Sunderland, I wouldn't mind, I suppose. Any of those teams, I don't care. Um, but home at West Brom, probably the best choice to keep him in, and he has proved he's a good player so far, even though he didn't really do anything. In that. Oh, he got assist, sorry, but that's. It's a playmaker, you expect him to do that. David Silva, I would really question having him on my team because he's playing against Stoke and Stoke will really try and trample him out and really try and just move him out of the game and that is worrying but I'm going to leave it for now and that will be my field Strikers, Lukaku for me it's not worth the risk like I said he could do really well but I'd rather have the secured two points from Naismith rather than getting zero like I did with Koscielny and that is all the changes for now. It, like I say, it, sometimes I may not have to make any changes, sometimes I may have to change the whole face of the team. It all depends on who the teams are playing. And that is why I think that Fantasy Premier League is best, because it, like the Telegraph, I did that um, last year, and I entered a few leagues and everything, few, um, and one of the leagues is a few mates from college. It's tough because you only get 11 players, you don't get a bench, so if you've got a keeper that's playing against a tough team, he c you can't change him out unless you make a transfer, and he could have a really hard time. But, that is the team I'm sticking with, I feel like Valencia could prove to be a massive mistake for me now that they've got Di Maria, but I'm not sure, and he hasn't performed recently. He needs to perform. I mean, he got an assist for Mata, but he didn't get a home of assist last season. Um, but that is the team I'm going to be sticking with. One other thing I'm not going to do this week is if Rooney doesn't perform against Burnley, I'll be changing my captain because seven points was good, two points, mm, maybe not. But uh, it's double the points, so I want to get a good player in and a player that will get you secured points for example Terry, Cahill or maybe even Ivanovic Ivanovic has done brilliantly so far that's why I've drafted him in or even the keeper I mean 14 points against QPR I mean, come on that's insane but that's how I'm going to end it done my team make sure if you take anything out of this episode look at the fixtures and look at the teams you've got to analyse the teams to do well at this if you've got a striker that isn't in form Look at who is um, who he's coming up against. A team could be weak in the defence. That could be his chance to break through that some people might not see. But thank you guys for watching. If you like the video, leave a like. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Subscribe if you feel like I'm worthy. And I'll catch you all for the review of Game Week 3.